In my big battery build video series, I explained how I've been using a new version of the DIY BMS cell modules. These are version 4.5. Before I explain the changes in this new version, it's probably worth spending some time explaining how the existing modules actually work. All of the modules up to now have been designed to use the AppTiny 841 chip as the heart of each module. The chip works great and has a lot of useful features, but it was released nearly a decade ago. A key feature of this chip is its analog to digital converter, otherwise known as a, a uh, ADC. Uh, this is used to sample the voltages of the cells and to report back to the uh, controller. One of the biggest problems facing DIY BMS at the moment is poor availability of the chips. I did a video on this at the start of this year. I think I called it uh, Chippergeddon. A quick look at uh, Farnell and the uh, 841 chip is out of stock until at least April 2023. The price has also shut up. It's now over £1.70 per chip. We power the AppTiny chip directly from the, the cell being measured. Uh, there are no voltage regulators, so that means uh, we can be very uh, energy efficient um, but putting the, the chip into a sleep mode uh, whenever the uh, controller is not communicating with the module. We also feed in a very stable 1.25 volt reference. This is part D1, as highlighted by the arrow. This voltage reference provides an accurate fixed value, which the AppTiny chip can then use to determine the cell voltage. This reference chip has a 0.5% tolerance in its uh, output voltage, so it's very, very stable. Whilst putting together this video, I also noticed that, that so unfortunately this chip has also now gone end of life. So I'll need to start looking for uh, alternatives for uh, future designs. Although there are plenty in stock at uh, most suppliers, so I'm not going to worry too much yet. Alongside the voltage reference, we use two resistors to form a voltage divider circuit. The purpose of this is to scale down the uh, incoming cell voltage to a signal level that's between zero and the 1.25 volt, which is obviously the fixed reference voltage. The combination of these two resistors allows us to read a cell voltage up to 4.39 volts, which is suitable for a wide range of lithium ion cells, like the 18650s for instance. I've put a link on screen to a useful site if you don't understand what a voltage divider is or, or how it works. So let's now look at an example where the cell we're trying to measure is exactly 3.5 volts or 3,500 millivolts. We can see that the AppTiny chip is now powered with the 3.5 volts and that same voltage is fed into the uh, voltage divider circuit. The output of that circuit scales down the input voltage to 995 millivolts or just under one volt. Now, if you remember, the AppTiny has a 10-bit analog to digital converter, the ADC. So it can read a value between zero and 1023 with the full scale being the reference voltage at 1.25 volts. So hopefully you're keeping up with me now because it's going to get a bit more maths, maths involved in, in a second. So if we take the 999, sorry, 995 millivolts uh, fed into the ADC, the AppTiny chip will actually read a value of 815 internally. By applying a bit of maths, uh, we can then multiply that value by a constant to obtain the true cell voltage. That constant is the configuration value you see in the DIY BMS controller interface, and is how you uh, calibrate each of the cell modules. The modules need calibration, as there are uh, three components uh, which, which have uh, manufacturing tolerances. So that's the, the voltage uh, reference chip and then the, the two resistors. The ADC can read uh, whole numbers like 815 in this example. So if the AppTiny reads 814 or 816 instead, this gives us the uh, expected resolution of the uh, voltage measurements. The smallest voltage we can differentiate on these modules is 4 millivolts. However, 4 millivolts isn't terrible. People, people often ask for a higher resolution, 
but don't really often need it. So that's how the DIY BMS modules work, up till now. This is the new version 4.5. Physically, it looks very similar, but the first major change is the uh, Tiny chip. So I've swapped out the 841 to one of the newer Tiny AVR2 devices. This one is a bit overkill really for uh, the requirements of each module, but it seems to be the one that's most commonly uh, in stock in places and the easiest to get hold of. These devices were only released two years ago and they have an improved ADC, which can now measure uh, in 12-bit resolution. Back over at uh, Farnell, although this chip has just gone out of stock, uh, it's expected back in January. Some other suppliers uh, do have these in stock already. But also look at the cost. Uh, so these chips have, have more features, but are actually 50% lower cost than the outgoing 841 model. We have the same arrangement of the cell voltage and 1.25 reference being fed into the Attiny 1624. However, this is where uh, the differences uh, start appearing. There is no longer a voltage divider circuit, which uh, removes the need for uh, those two resistors. Unfortunately, calibration will still be required as the uh, reference voltage is never going to be uh, absolutely perfect. So instead of the voltage divider, we use a method of uh, voltage measurement known as band gap. Repeating with the same example we used before with a 3.5 volt cell, we now flip the way we measure. We use the actual cell voltage of 3.5 volts as the reference and now read the fixed voltage uh, scaled against that. Now this might all sound a little bit complicated, but ultimately we end up with a fairly simple formula where we read the ADC value and run it through the uh, formula on the screen to end up with the cell voltage. We use a value of one for the configuration constant here, um, but that's only because we're assuming a perfect voltage reference. Repeating the same test we did with the 841 chip now shows that we have a three millivolt re resolution. So better than before. It's also worth mentioning that the new AtTiny chip uh, supports hardware oversampling on the ADC. This is a technique to remove errors and improve the uh, reading from the, the ADC. Um, I've actually enabled this within the code, but I won't go into it in, in the details here because it, it gets quite uh, complex. So if you've kept up with, with me till now, um, you might ask why we can't get a one millivolt resolution or even better. We could improve the situation by using a 4.096 volt uh, fixed reference. However, that instantly comes with a lot of negatives. First, we would have to run uh, the AtTiny at a higher voltage than that. So probably about five volts. So a boost regulator would be needed. That also adds cost and complexity to the board. It's also likely to use additional energy. This would also prevent the monitoring of uh, lithium ion cells like the 18650, where the cell voltage can actually go over four volts. What might be possible in the future is to switch to a 2.048 reference. This in theory then gives a two millivolt resolution, but this may also limit the type of cells we can then measure. Um, LTL, LTO cells, for example, operate around 2.4 volts. So that wouldn't be suitable for that uh, newer design. Physically, the new modules look very similar to the previous ones. They still have the uh, snap-off temperature sensor, uh, and that connects to the uh, JST socket in the middle of the uh, board. This board also has uh, footprints for using the pluggable uh, connector blocks. Um, and that's what I've used in my uh, battery build. But the older JST connections are still there if you prefer those. The big negative of this new board is the way it now needs to be programmed. So the AtTiny chips have moved to a uh, different way of programming uh, called UPDI, UPDI. This is a three pin connection, as you can see on the left. This is the same type of programming uh, as the DIY BMS current monitor requires. So if you've built one of those, um, you'll be familiar with this uh, mechanism already. Unfortunately, the DIY BMS controller doesn't have built-in support uh, for the automatic programming of these devices. So you'll have to do it uh, on your computer, as it were, using an UPDI programmer. 
an old Arduino style board or is good for this, or even just a uh, FTDI serial cable can also be used. I updated the instructions on GitHub uh, with some pointers on uh, how to actually achieve this. The links to my GitHub repositories are in the description of this video. The files you will need to actually build and order these new modules are here, located in the version 450 folder. And then inside that, look for a folder named export. If you're planning to use JLC PCB to build these boards, you will need the uh, gerbers.zip file, along with the, the BOM and the CPL files. When ordering from JLC PCB, please support this project by using my affiliate link. It won't cost you anything extra, but helps me make more prototypes and improvements. So this is going to be my last YouTube video for 2022. Thank you for the support and the comments uh, this year. The channel has uh, grown quite a lot. I enjoy reading and replying to uh, the comments you leave on my uh, videos, so please keep it up. I'll be back in 2023 uh, with some big uh, changes to the uh, controller code, um, particularly around the emulation of uh, Pylon Tech batteries and integration with CAN bus and things like that. So until then, have a good new year. See you next year.